Hi guys, I'm Caleb. Welcome back to my channel and today we will be talking and reacting to Ispa's first mini album, Savage. And so, as I always do before I get into the music video, the album, reactions, I typically also go into who Espa are just for myself to know and also for you if you're not really familiar with them for you to know as well or if I missed out anything feel free to let me know in the comment section below so Espa um, they are a group under SM Entertainment the first group since Red Velvet uh, in 2014 and the group consists of four members Karina, Giselle, Winter and Ning Ning and in November last year they debuted with the single Black Mamba uh, and their group name combines the in English initials of Avatar and Experience, the AE and with the English word Aspect, the SP uh, meaning to slides uh, to, uh, to symbolize the idea of meeting another self and experiencing the new world so I remember back then when the teaser images were coming out yeah it was like this whole like very KDA kind of concept where they would have the alternate egos or alternate presentations of themselves in uh, like uh, what do you even call that 3D projection form with that song they did actually manage to get a first music show win this year and then they had their second single Forever which I felt was kind of meh as a ballad I mean it was a remake of a 2000 song so uh, I mean I have my own prejudices against uh, old K-pop music I'm not very very into it but hey if it's for you it's for you and then they had Next Level which uh, was the song that really got me into their music because I think even though that song is not really original it's a remake of another song um, but um, yeah I, I like the the part where it says watch me while I work it out and then you know it gets into that whole the beat drop at first I felt like you know it was like three songs in one and that was what was turning me off but hey I actually kind of loved it after a few listens but and then so um, they then announced that was in May and then in July they signed with Creative Arts Agency for future activities in the US and then in September they announced that they will release their first EP Savage containing six tracks to uh, and of course it's dropped today on October 5th so Savage is uh, described as a trap genre song with drums and basses as a main focus and um, later on I'll be covering the rest of the songs on the album um, and they actually are supposed to have a Sync Dive Espa Savage Showcase on YouTube later on after the two hours after the music video drops and actually on even today on October 5th it was reported that the EP had reached 401,000 pre-order sales pretty good considering that they are still in their first year what the members said Karina was saying that you know they didn't expect to receive that much attention. Winter was saying that they want to show people that they are improving and they're growing, they're working harder. Ning Ning said that Savage is a song that showcases a strong fight against the Black Mamba and they want to show a more relaxed yet powerful appearance. And Karina was mentioning something about Lee Soon Man, the face behind SM. He changed up the key point of their song. He tweaked it a bit. Um, so then, yeah, so I'll, I'll be looking forward to that. It's, it says what, something like what? Tsk, tsk. Okay, I uh, can't wait to see that. And then first, Giselle says that the first the mem black member appears, the story continues to show us of going into the grassland, then with the help of Nevis, we fight against the black mamba, their combat skills and assistance, and we carry out additional duties. Winter was saying that uh, they want to show the powerful strong side, and the camera is as if it's like the black mama's eyes and they're, and they were slithering at the floor and they're trying to dance while looking at the camera as if they're going to break it so I'm going to look forward to that as well I'm going to take note of that and um, now um, having said that 
um, they had facing a bit of controversy over their concept photos because it looks very similar to the work by Japanese illustrator Hajime Sorayama and yeah I saw the photos it looks pretty similar but then again I read the comments where people were saying that SM is no stranger to plagiarisms or confirmed or alleged yeah so I it's, yep it's still wrong you know um, but yeah um, kind of weird because even the song the re this song is also a remake of or inspired by Megan Thee Stallion's Savage so it's like not only artistically by the visuals but also musically they are kind of not original but okay SM I feel like you know and this brings me to my point where you know this whole Kuang Ya thing with the universe I think a lot of people do like it it's like a very cool thing you know you connect like Red Velvet all the current groups NCT EXO shiny and all that into this whole universe but I don't know I, I'm this is just my personal thoughts that I feel as far as being boxed in too quickly to a certain fixed concept or fixed kind of story because I get that they want to do a storyline kind of thing but typically it should last about maybe one or two comebacks and then they should go on to something else you know with Red Velvet I feel like even though at some times I feel sometimes the contract, concepts are a bit too far off for me like Zim Zalabim you know or uh, Oompa Oompa but I feel like you know at least they could explore like hard hitting ones a bit softer and all that with Espa, yes they had Forever but it was a remake of the song so it's not really like say original and it wasn't very that strong of a song either so I'm not surprised that it didn't do very well and I, I also didn't really like it but yeah I, I'm not trying to say that they should do ballad and then do a pop song but you know they could do multiple pop songs but it doesn't have to have that same dark you know ooh, kind of a sound you know because with Savage when I was hearing the teasers it sounds exactly like Next Level like the watch me while I work out and then with this one there's also like uh, some wordplay going on as well I can't remember it right now but yes it sounds so similar like it could just do a mashup and it sounds exactly the same um, that's it of course music is music you know um, nothing is original nowadays um, but yeah I want to see more I want to see them do something else more concepts different other kind of concepts maybe more bubbly fun cute you know but with Kuang Ya it's definitely going to box them up even more uh, I, 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 it's, it's going to be interesting to see because this is the first group that is like I would say it's affected very much by the Kuang Ya thing uh, as compared to all the other groups because they have already debuted and they had time you know to kind of form their own identities before that so it's like I don't think Kuang Ya as a concept would really affect their development or kind of music here on out but I feel like with Espa it's kind of trapping them but let me know in the comment section if you think the same way maybe I'm just uh, raising the alarms too early but that's it you know um, let's get into the song I will be talking about the album later on so don't worry um, this song was co-written by SM's in-house producer Yu Yong Jin who also did uh, if I'm not wrong Black Mamba so definitely um, you know obviously it's going to sound similar and then with Hot Boy Rich and Xia Li who did NCT use 90s Love I think judging from the teaser yes I kind of get this kind of same sound um, and Kristen Collins yeah, I would get into the rest of the details of the album later on. Right now, we will get into watching the music video. Right now, it's really one hour in into the uh, since the music video dropped, and it's at 1.8 million views. So that's really, really good. Let's see how this concept and song lives up to its expectations. My complaint that I feel oh okay with the rap, I'm liking this. Okay, I am loving it. Karina and Giselle doing the rap. I feel like they didn't do much, or at least at all, in the previous songs. Maybe a bit, with 
next level but here it's really fully that and then now winter coming in with the hook oh i love the underlying what do you call that harmonies <laughs> i was expecting i'm a savage classy boozy or something but okay i enjoy the change like it didn't completely follow my desalian song Oh yes, this was in the teaser. Oh, I guess this is the key point. Yeah, this part sounds really like, you know, it could fit in with Watch Me While I Work It Out, you know, from Next Level. I kind of like it with this melody line on top of the spoken word. It creates this duality that I feel is very in brand with Ispa. Okay, Giselle with the sass and the attitude and with that rap style. Oh, Winter also doing it now. I wonder if they're gonna promote this song largely for the US. I mean, considering that they already signed with a US agency for promotion in the US. But the song itself doesn't have much of the English lyrics that I was expecting. Oh, I like that the members are taking turns. So some, like Karina is singing for the chorus. I don't know the point. Honestly, I don't feel like there's any point with the whole 3D hologram figures. I'm sure they were expanding it to be something more like maybe like an eight member girl group kind of a situation and then people they kind of didn't vibe with it that much. And then honestly for me I don't see a point in it. They could they could do it without it. But maybe it takes time, maybe I would really we will appreciate it later on. I don't know. This bridge works even though it sounds very different like off the beat of what it was like in the verse and the chorus like by its sound by it's more cohesive than next level for sure oh i love the break dance break oh and then with that whole what is that electronic notes whoa ning ning with that um sudden like the belting um adlets. yes winter i think she also did the did um, like a high vocals also in next level. Interesting, having that high vocals with like that whole spoken words. Still really expensive as I was expecting from them. It's really expensive, it's still very expensive. Like it's done very like succinctly and really like high budget, you know, you can feel that and I definitely feel it with this. Uh, I was expecting it to be a bit more US or like Western audience kind of directed since they just signed with the Creative Arts Agency and you know typically with the songs nowadays releases, K-pop releases they kind of tend to sound more westernized like with more English lyrics but I'm glad they're still keeping with the brand like on that on, you know on the end with like uh, Korean lyrics and um, uh, the only semblance, like the very little bit of semblance to like uh, Megan Thee Stallion's is the chorus bit where they say I'm a savage and then perhaps because their verses are in rap style but yeah I actually enjoy this song I think on first listen I would definitely download this song as compared to the next level which took me a while to get into so now we shall get into the album. So the album track list it goes it starts with Energy, um, and then Savage, which is a you know the song that um, there's a title track, and then I'll make you cry, Yepi Yepi, iconic, lucid dream, uh, yeah, and Yu Young Jin has uh, had a hand in Energy as well. I'm expecting it probably might sound very similar, or it might sound like an opening kind of uh, instrumental track, like how it typically sounds like. Um, for uh, EPs or uh, like uh, certain artists EPs. I've read some information about the songs that I said Energy is an upbeat song while I'll Make You Cry is a dance song about revenge. Yappy Yappy is a full of deep house and trance sounds while Iconic is a dance pop song where, and it ends with Lucid Dream, a pop song with a dreamy vibe. Hmm, interesting. So it's all really in that pop sense. It's like what I was saying, you know, with whole how SM is framing uh, Espa to be like so far their repertoire I mean with only 
three. Uh, if you don't count forever, it's two, and then two songs, and they sound really similar. And this one was uh, also um, probably all pop sounding, which is definitely uh, pleasing for me to know. But um, I don't know. I feel like they could expand more. You know. But let's see, right? Perhaps they are going to specialize in the trap house genre, uh, hip hop style of music uh, under SM. That might be good. And uh, looking at the people who wrote, uh, it was saying that Heidi Kiyoko, she did um, do the music part of uh, Lucy Dream. That's going to be a thing to look forward to. I think, uh, yeah, if you haven't checked out. Kelly Kyoko's music, please do. I think she's really talented, just really underrated artist, and I'm quite interesting that she's actually collaborating with SM, uh, or at least wrote the song before SM picked it up, like the demo maybe. Yeah, so let's get into the the tracks. I I can't wait to see what, yeah, what what the song would be like, what the songs would be like, and hopefully I will enjoy this album in its entirety. And let's see whether the track list does make uh, make sense. So we're gonna start with energy. Oh, okay. Take my word back. There's a lot of English here. Okay, the rap influences are definitely much more with this album so far. So far with the two tracks. And can I say I appreciate that all six tracks are actual tracks and not instrumentals like they are actual separate songs and it's good that this first track is not a intro instrumental it's an actual song itself very kind of like a marching kind of song military style Mench whoa you mentioning each other's name in the song I like the stripped back kind of sound of it, like the instrumentation isn't very heavy so it definitely gives the quality of an intro track, like it's to ease the audience into the, the, the album itself. I can imagine this if they were to perform this in a concert as the starting song. Wow, it definitely would be like a good like uh, starter to hype the crowd. It gives that nuanced feeling to it. Now we head to I'll Make You Cry. Ooh. The instrumentation though seems very ominous and I mean noting that this follows from Savage right? Yeah it still keeps with a very dark concept. Ooh. Yeah like I was saying this whole dual sound thing going on. Dual vocal. Dual pitched vocal going on. Very in line with Espa's sound. Whoa, an interesting. This is a unique. This is a unique chorus. Oh, I'm loving the instrumentation. And really, so far, it's been. The instrumentation is, is fast enough to focus a lot on the vocals, but still able to carry it. You know what I'm saying? In the sense that it's enough. Like it's sufficient to create that dance sound, that dance beat that gets people jumping, I feel. And then, as is always unique with Espa, like they have changing beats within the song, which gives like surprises at every corner. Okay, the bridge is very similar to Savage, but it's a bit more of a ballad style. I think the part of the song that I love most is this part where the beat and the syncopated beat of the melody is so catchy so catchy i must say what a treat this this uh this song is yes definitely giving me a bit more like a diff like it has a unique parts to it uh that separates itself from energy and stuff so huh this album is actually proving to be proving me wrong uh, one by one. Um, let's see if Yepi, what Yepi does. It definitely feels more, more bright in in tone. Oh, I yeah. It's definitely less of the darker uh, tones that were present in Black Mamba, Next Level, Savage, Energy, or Make You Cry. 
This is a good change. This is a change I was asking for. This is a change I was asking for. Seriously. Oh, I like this song. They kill this kind of sound. I hope they have a tribal track that's of this sound. Yes, this is very SM, the, the chord progression. The dissonances, you know. This is the key part of the song that gets me. Gets me, like, wow. Hooked on this song. Interesting as the outro. I would love to see this perform live. I want to see the, how they do this part. It's probably like a dance break ish kind of a sound. Uh, look. Oh, it goes back into the Saurus. This is so. Ah, uh, this is such a new side of Ispa. It's so bright, and I. Yes. Don't get me wrong, this song still fits into this whole overall concept that's darker because they have the other songs, other parts of the song still fits it. What's Yepi? I'm not sure. Is that like a Korean term for something? Let me know. <laughs> and then ends, ends with some laughter at the end. Okay, I am liking that song. Definitely, definitely a new style of but I've not seen yet and I've wanted to see for so long. Let's go iconic. 3, 2, 1. Okay, I like the beat that is setting out. Oh, I was hoping that it would stay on that happy kind of sound, a uh, brighter sound of it. Maybe another song more? It's not bad of a song. I like the sound. Oh wait! Okay. This part sounds very like psycho. I know something about it. The chord progression, for sure. Okay, there is the bright side to it. In, the, in this hook that's leading up to the chorus. This sounds very Red Velvet, like I... What song is it? I can't remember which song of every album it's but yes. Oh, Zoom Zoom Zoom. I guess it's the only bright song, was part of the song, but it matches with Yepi. Yes. That part of the I see, O and I see, gives me the sound of like, I see that I'm I see. Is it me? Is it just me? <laughs> Let me know in the comment section if that's you as well. Okay, we go to our last track, the one with uh, that Kaylee Kyoko wrote. I am hoping, or at least I'm thinking there's going to be some more English in this. So far it's been a kind of sparse English, uh, except for the first track. And let's see, um, I mean I'm okay with either way, it's just, I was just thinking because it's Kaylee Kyoko. But she's just one of the writers, so let's see how. This feels very outro kind of track. Like it, you know, kind of things are winding out, winding down. A bit more of a slower tempo-ish. Or at least, uh, not so upbeat rhythm. Yeah, it's very R&B. Okay, I like this side of them as well. I'm not sure whether this is the flair of Hiri Kyoko, but this feel this sounds very Hiri Kyoko. If you check out her song, Curious, that part sounds very like quick succession of words kind of thing. It's yes, this part sounds very Hiri Kyoko. Check that out and let me know. I think the key point of the song is here with the chorus uh, again. I like. Yeah, like a dance break kind of a uh, rhythm. I feel this is gonna work very well for live stages. I like that interesting play, like they they had that um, very weird sounding, I don't know even how you call it, like auto-tuned and muffled voice and then they were interacting it with it with their own vocals. I have to say, overall, I'm thoroughly pleased with the album. I think it definitely finally get to see more beyond um, you know the title tracks that Ispa produces because I'm, I have a feeling that here on out their title tracks might actually sound pretty similar to one another because of this whole universe idea but with an EP or with an album hopefully in the works um, we get to see more sides of them and yeah, with Yepi, Lucid Dream, I feel like those are the two so far, other than Forever, let's take the Elvic Equation first. Those two songs 
which are truly Espa songs and they really go beyond like exploring R&B, exploring more of a bubblegum pop sound and I really hope to see them do more of that um, of course you know keep killing it with the hip hop sound because everyone loves that I love that I think they do it really well and you know it just takes more and more and more comebacks like this and they probably will be queens of this you know thinking about branding wise I think they are you know specialized in that field of K-pop music yeah especially with that whole dual tone of the vocals very espa and I think they, they know that clearly you know um, yeah let me know what you think of this the album in general and uh, of Savage as the song do you feel like do you agree with my sentiments about it or do you feel like I that you know otherwise you know you feel like this is a very good direction this whole Kwang Ye thing the whole the whole branding um, what they have done so far and here, here on out you know they are doing really well um, yeah let me know what you think I would uh, certainly love to see your suggestions and also let me know what you want me to talk about in, in the comment section down below uh, yes uh, and stay safe everyone um, yeah it's quite bad out there but um, this music is just gonna keep us going and uh, yeah looking forward to more comebacks more releases that I could talk about and react to for you guys and hope to see you on the next one and that's me see ya